Hi, and welcome to 5 Minutes with Phil. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 11, which simply says, Command and teach these things. Command is not a word we use much these days, but many are aware of the C prompt on a computer. It's the command prompt, and it goes to back, back to the MS-DOS days. It's where the user commands the computer to do something, and it immediately does exactly what's being commanded. Way back in the ancient days of card punch programming, when I was at studying at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, I did a computer and information science course where I learned the rudiments of Algol, Fortran, and APL. And I'll never forget the very first thing that the prof said. Always remember that computers are amazingly stupid. They do exactly what you tell them to do. 48 years later, it's still true. Even as AI is making a huge mark on our world, we're seeing the influence of the code writers on its output. A command is something that's to be done immediately. We understand it from a military perspective. The commander gives the commands, and his or her underlings obey. In the U.S., the president is the commander-in-chief. From the military perspective, no one has more authority or power. In the Salvation Army, my home church for a large portion of my life, there is a territorial commander who's in command of Canada and Bermuda, a divisional commander who's in command of British Columbia, and technically the pastor or corps officer is actually the commanding officer. That's not a structure that works particularly well anymore, and it's right up and down the line of command. There are advisory boards and councils that give additional insight to the one who is in command. Of course, in Paul's day, they were very aware of the military power of Rome and of the soldiers who lived in their midst. When they spoke, you listened and obeyed. In Matthew 8, Jesus has an encounter with a Roman centurion whose son was at home and very sick. Jesus asked a simple question, shall I come and heal him? And the centurion gave Jesus an answer that is very informative. Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he does. I tell another one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. The centurion says, I know what it's like to have authority and to have commands obeyed. Jesus, you have even more authority. Just command it, and it shall be done. It's interesting in the sports world today how much difference video replay has made. I guess it's a natural follow-up to the home plate umpire asking the first or third base umpire to make the decision on whether a batter swung since he has a better vantage point. Now, there are cameras everywhere. In the NFL, every scoring play is reviewed by someone somewhere to determine whether the play stands or not. If there's enough evidence, the ruling on the field can be overturned or confirmed. If there's not enough evidence to overturn, overturn the ruling, it stands. On every play, several referees and umpires and judges are making judgment calls. But in many cases, their authority is subject to further judgment. But for some reason, there is no review on some calls. For example, the home plate umpire calls balls and strikes and his word is final. We also learned recently that if the catcher catches a foul tip so the batter would be out and then drops the ball while transferring it to his throwing hand, but the umpire didn't see the cause of the drop, there is no review. A batter who should have been out is instead facing another pitch. Without that mistake call, mistaken call, Aaron Judge would have been out. Instead, he one bounced the ball of the outfield off the outfield fence, and the Yankees went on to beat the Red Sox. It could have changed everything, and the Blue Jays could have still been playing. No, I'm I'm not bitter. I'm really not. This year, in AAA baseball, all the parks are using robot umpires when it comes to calling balls and strikes. The computer has the final authority. Coming soon to a major league ballpark near you. Maybe his name is Hal. In this passage, it seems to me that Paul is saying to Timothy, don't take no for an answer. 
When you teach these things about living a godly life, be firm, don't be compromising, don't give people a take-it-or-leave-it attitude. Your actions have eternal consequences, and therefore your teaching has eternal consequences as well. So teach these things. Give them some weight. These are eternal truths. God gave us the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions. Exodus 20 says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day it's a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter, your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey or anything belongs to your neighbor. There is a weight a heaviness to each of those. There's no other word for it. Commands. Don't do this. Do this. In our day, we might hear, Timothy, encourage people not to have any other gods, okay? That's not asking too much, is it? Enough said. I hope you get the idea. Have a wonderful week.